Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or even good night, depending on where you are in the world. Well, once again, thank you for attending the second day of the 2020 e-navigation underway conference. My name is Ju Yun Cho, and I have been given the honor of being the MC today. The e-navigation conference marks its fourth anniversary since its inauguration in 2017. And together with conferences held in Europe and North America, uh, it has established itself as one of the world's top three e-navigation conferences. This year, to prevent the spread of COVID-19, we have turned it on to, into an online virtual conference. However, we do have the participation from all, uh, from all over the world. So we continue to have these online conferences and of course, uh, the virtual uh, presence of our guests. It is currently 4 p.m. in Korea and we also have uh, various participants today uh, from a variety of different countries. So thank you once again. The e-navigation conference for today will be held for around two and a half hours from now on. So we ask for your avid participation and to post up many questions if you have them. So Director Sun Bae Hong, uh, once again, thank you for yeah. coming and being the joint host. So you're here participating in the conference and I believe that you also have a presentation today. What was your overall impression of day one? Yeah, thank you. I was so surprised to see more than 700 participants from 50 countries registered to this conference this time. And the conference is very successful so far, I believe. Yesterday, we have two sessions and MCP showcases highlight the importance of the harmonization among the global maritime digitalization, which is the reason why we, this conference we will discuss the Digital Edge Initiative through two sessions today. Thank you. Yes, that is correct. We do have a Digital at Sea Initiative session, so I also look forward to that as well. But I believe that this transition into an online conference uh, would have been quite difficult. Um, it wouldn't have been easy. So uh, how did you feel while planning for this conference? Well, thank you. I thought to myself, we need to continuously move forward if we consider that the navigation has been discussed for more than 14 years. Such international needs and also cooperation and made we had been trying to do up to now, way more than fear of the COVID-19 pandemic, I believe. So that's all. Yes, uh, that's true. We do have to continue on the important discussions. And as you may be able to see online, we do have uh, protection and precaution against the spread of COVID-19. Uh, all of the uh, house guests are socially distanced from each other. And we also have these plastic walls set up between myself and Sunbe in order to uh, protect us uh, from COVID-19. And uh, even with the challenges, I believe uh, that it has done a great job for the first day of the conference. So congratulations and thank you thank once you. again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, everyone. Uh, then let us start today's conference with the session three. Session three is to be chaired by Dr. Axel Hahn from Office German. And the topic is challenges with maritime digitalization and international cooperation. So Dr. Axel Han, uh, if you are online and if you can hear us well, thank you once again for taking the role of the moderator. If you are ready, you can take the floor. I believe uh, you are still on mute, Dr. Han. Maybe yes. better now? I don't know. We can hear yeah, you. Could, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, okay, so again, thank you very much for passing it to me to the floor. And best greetings to all the participants around the world. It's a real pleasure. 
We will be here virtually with all of you, and I was very honored to present yesterday, and now being the moderator of the session again today. And uh, as you know, this is the first session on the second day of the conference, and let us begin. So we jump directly into the game, and the first presentation will be by Mr. Jeff Bull, on harmonization of maritime data models leading to port optimization. That is a very welcome talk because we had, I had some questions again yesterday about the relations of all the data modeling and how and everything. So welcome, Mr. Jeff Newell, with a big round of virtual applause. <laughs> Interesting times we are having these uh, these days, in particular because of the COVID nineteen, which has uh, spread uh, uh, a long lasting implications not only to the environment and, and to the global economy, but also to shipping. Um, but I have to say that the outbreak has actually also uh, provided us with some positive side effects uh, because we have been forced to some extent to re-examine our routines in shipping and uh, in that regard we have taken a gigantic leap forward uh, in working on a digital way in shipping which is very positive. Indeed, my name is Jeppe Juhl. I'm educated as naval architect. I've been working with BIMCO for about uh, eight years. And uh, information about BIMCO is put at the end of the presentation for those who, who want to, to know about it. But, but BIMCO is an uh, uh, international, uh, the largest direct impacted association with about covering about 65% uh, of the world's tonnage. Yes, please, next. Um, if we look into conferences uh, these days, the most hot topic, of course, apart from digitalization in, in shipping, is uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals and also uh, how to comply with Paris Agreement and, and greenhouse gases and so on and so forth. Um, and in order to embrace this, uh, these, these important agendas. IMO has also developed their own uh, greenhouse gas uh, strategy in order to cope with, with these reductions in shipping. Uh, these reductions in carbon efficiency should be 40% in 2030 and 70% in 2015, and we should cut uh, or we should phase out the carbon in, in fuel in general uh, by the end of the century. So we have a tremendous uh, push. Uh, towards shipping to do uh, a lot of uh, uh, optimization and enhancement, not only on board the ships, but also ashore in ports, for instance. Um, to reach these goals, IMO has uh, issued a number of initiatives. And if you can change to the next slide, please. Um, some of these initiatives is actually not directly linked, but in, in a way they are anyway. And I will explain a little. Uh, some of this new regulation is actually requesting that uh, that we have to establish a system whereby we can have digital reporting when our ships uh, call a port. And this is quite important because it's a re uh, it's a requirement to uh, 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 coastal states that they should implement these requirements. Uh, this is in some ways very positive because we will push for the digitalization in the maritime industry, but it's also a quite alarming. And the reason for this is that the, the coastal states and the flag states and port authorities and so on and so forth may actually develop own initiatives, uh, let's call them single national uh, single window maritime windows and and that will cause a tsunami of individual solutions which are not uh, aligned in such way that the ships can call each individual of the solutions in an easy way so uh, that will end up in a disaster please go to the next one so as I mentioned many times yesterday standards 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 and also harmonization is the solution to the issue. Um, it is only possible that we will have a fully digitalized maritime solution if we can establish a common uh, harmonized 
uh, way of communicating and exchange information across systems and platforms directly and with no need for additional services or devices. This is, however, not a simple solution as it sounds. Um, and uh, just to illustrate this as part of the EU fund project, uh, the efficiency, we did an assessment and discovered that uh, there could indeed be a huge uh, reduction in the admin burdens if standards could, could uh, speak with each other across platforms, as also mentioned yesterday. Please uh, go to the next slide. So um, the example in front of you is to just to illustrate four different standards we looked into. No systems share and exchange the same information. And I want to emphasize this. They exchange the same information, but do it in an individual way. And uh, though uh, these individual data elements are not called the same, this means that we cannot share data in an easy machine-to-machine -machine, uh, way across platforms. So, so if we should uh, opt for such a solution, then we would simply just need to establish a system whereby we could communicate across platforms in a harmonized single data model. If you can go to the next one, please. So the simplified... Uh, solution is illustrated on the slide right now. So instead of having, let's say, 2,000 different solutions ashore, uh, combined with, let's say, 70,000 ships uh, in the global fleet, uh, we need to have a kind of interface, harmonized interface between the various solutions and the various ships in order for them to communicate in one language and one kind of data model. So regardless of the solution, we should be able to exchange the same information but across different platforms. In the illustration, I have just uh, illustrated three different APIs. Uh, one could be the maritime single window on, in Norway or in Singapore, for instance, uh, and we could also have an API uh, on the local data provi service provider. But in a way that we will have the ship to submit information directly to shore. That is the idea. And if you can go to the next one, I have illustrated this by a concept which I call the bow tie uh, concept solution. It, it uh, may uh, be a little difficult to, to, to see and understand, so I will explain it to you. Um, to the very left, uh, well, you was a bit too fast for print, pushing the next, but doesn't matter, don't, don't go back. <laughs> It's fine. Just yeah, no, keep it there. <laughs> Thank you. If you if you look to the left, you will have the various data standards which we are uh, harvesting the information from. And to the very left, you will see where all this information should go to. All these maritime services, it could be immigration, it could be police, uh, and so on and so forth, it has been mentioned as part of the maritime single window. That is good and fine. But because we have the IMO requirement saying that we should establish a, 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 um, a, a common or, or individual uh, data exchange platforms, um, we cannot make sure that all this information goes directly into the maritime single window in the individual country. So if we take the data standard, collect all the relevant data element information, that could be ship name, it could be IMO number, it could be cargo information, it could be port of call, the next port of call, the previous port of calls, and so on and so forth, combine them into some data sets. It could be a data set related to the file information, it could be a data set collected to capture the stowaways, it could be on port logistic and so on and so forth. We could put that into the context of uh, IMO reference data model. Keep that word in mind, IMO reference data model. This data model will be our language to communicate between all the various pro platforms. Then the, the, the reference data model, the IMO reference data model, can be converted into 
various API services and uh, maritime services. For instance, by the port state of Singapore, it could be the port state of Morocco, or it could be Korea, it could be whoever. They can do their individual platform based on the IMO reference data model. And as you can see, these service APIs could go into the maritime single window. It could be containing port information, and it could be containing all kinds of maritime service providers. And if you push next, then you will see it is actually forming a kind of, of butterfly. This is a reason why I called it a Baotai concept solution. Please go to the next one. The implementation of this IMO reference model, which is actually developed as we speak, um, it at this point in time contains a lot of information already. There is a, a section related to the data uh, uh, trade data set. We have a data set on customs, but we also have a maritime core data set containing the full IMO file compendium, as we uh, as we know. Um, we also have a maritime declaration on health. We have stowaways. Right now, we have port logistics operational data related to the just in time, which will I come back to in my presentation. Uh, ship certificates, and so on and so forth. So right now we have these kind of data sets, and where we need one data element in all the three data sets, we simply need to align that in order for the data set to be, or the data element to be the same across the various data sets. Please go to the next one. This is, uh, and please press next. This is how it looks right now. Um, the reference data model uh, contains about 300 data elements as we speak. Uh, additional 100 are pending for adoption at the virtual file meeting uh, end of this month. And for the 250 data elements will be in the pipeline for, let's say, in, in, in cooperation over the next 12 months. Um, please go to the next one. And the whole idea is that we will have the solution, a simple solution, machine-to-machine -machine exchange, which means one plus one is more than three. We will have a common uh, service specification combined with this IMO reference data model. So the data model will be incrementally uh, increased over time. If one data element or one information is lacking, then we can amend it according to the normal IMO procedure, but everybody can make use of this data model in order to exchange by use of the same language. Please go to the next one. So um, to explain the link from the IMO uh, maritime reference data model to the port optimization, uh, we have to keep in mind the IMO greenhouse gas strategy and the focus on port uh, efficiency. I therefore in, uh, present you uh, with a small case uh, where we have made use of this uh, uh, data uh, model in order to improve the port air emission and uh, enhancing the port efficiency. Please go to the next one. As part of the strategy, we, uh, there's a recommendation saying that we should establish a concept of just-in-time arrival. Just-in-time arrival is a concept referring to maintaining the most efficient ship speed operating during the voyage uh, in order to arrive at, the, for instance, the pilot boarding place when the port is ready for the ship to arrive to the port. Um, in this way, it would be uh, uh, a tool which provides a smart steaming instead of a slow steaming uh, because each hour we spend waiting outside the port is simply just waste of efficiency. It is waste of additional emissions. So we need to optimize the length of the voyage will when the berth is ready. And all these uh, effects uh, will actually avoid the port congestion. Please press next. And this is a description of the just-in-time arrival concept. And please, next again. Uh, the port congestion is, unfortunately, the normal of today. 
if you look at the upper left picture, it is uh, um, simply just a picture of uh, the ships waiting outside port of Fujiva in, in uh, UAE. Uh, the lower one is uh, a picture from Port of Singapore, and the other one is Port of uh, Ningbo in China. And you can see loads and loads and many ships are simply just waiting for no use. So instead of having the ship forcing the speed, go full steam ahead until they put down the anchor just outside the port, we will extend the voyage to such way that we can slow down the speed and save fuel at the same time and emission. Please go to the next one. There's a potential saving here. And uh, uh, the source of, uh, um, of uh, UN trade have uh, looked into uh, how much potential savings we could have by avoiding these weightings. And uh, to make a long story short, it is a huge potential that if we can reduce uh, about 140,000 port calls by port carriers, we could have a potential saving of 5.2 billion US dollar per year for the shipping. That is a very, very high number. Please go to the next one. So what we did, we looked into how to implement the simplest version of the just-in-time arrival concept and implement that to the IMO reference data model. Um, it was necessary to define uh, some places in the port, some some uh, some check marks, milestone. Uh, uh, what is it called? It's uh, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, some some places in the port whereby we could have a check of the time, and uh, then we need to have the timestamp implemented in the in the in the IMO reference data model. Please go to the next one. Um, but it's of course not only the just-in-time concept we should implement to the reference data model, it was also some contractual issues. And for those of you who are interested in contracts and clauses, uh, we uh, have developed, by PIMCO, we have developed a special clause related to the just-in-time. Um, in the past, we have a clause for the virtual arrival. We are also uh, see trade management, the STM, which we developed in November 2018. But now we are in, in, in as we speak, we are developing a just-in-time clause simply to permit the shoppers to request the owners to adjust the speed. So the ship will be allowed to arrive to the port at the given time. That is very, very, very important. So the IMO reference data model implemented into a single window concept together with the contractual uh, considerations, then we actually have a sustainable solution which ship owners and shadows will make use of. Please go to the next one. This is my second last slide. Um, many of you are of course interested in, in the data set in the IMO reference model. Right now we are waiting uh, some more uh, data sets to be implemented. Uh, right now is pending uh, environmental information. We also have uh, information on specific shipping conditions, uh, general safety information, additional cargo details at consignment level, which needs to be implemented, and also notification of readiness and bills of lading information. So there's a lot of things which are still pending, but that will be implemented, let's say, over the next 12 months. Um, but it is important that, that when the expert group who are dealing with this IMO data reference model, they uh, they have pending um, submissions on the maritime service according to the e-navigation, and also acknowledgement receipts and uh, IMO safety information, and uh, a bit more on the certificates. So lots of new data elements is coming into the data model in a very short period of time. And my last slide is the conclusion that uh, to conclude the presentation, we want to highlight that this data reference is is a fact. It's it's, it's actually when on the way. We can only collaborate uh, by exchanging uh, same information and speak the same language between 
all the various platforms. And uh, if we can do that in a harmonized way, we are actually able to reduce the administrative burden of 80%, 8 percent uh, according to what we have today. And that is a burden which we certainly should reduce uh, because we can do it in a simple and easy way. And with regard to the greenhouse gas uh, case, which I illustrate the, the port optimization, uh, we certainly need to call for action because we have to reduce uh, the emission not only on board the ship during the voyage, but also in port. And uh, that we can do by implementing the just-in-time concept uh, as a low-hanging fruit, uh, simply just to reduce uh, carbon emission footprint. I think that was my short presentation. 15 minutes is not long, and I think I was a bit overdue. Uh, but uh, please go to the next slide, and uh, that was the end of my presentation. Thank you. And yeah, thank you very much. So, on behalf of the Worldwide Audience, thank you very much, Shepard. This was Shepard Newell from Bimco. And now, on the virtual floor, we have Captain Singer from the Maritime Port Authority, Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, better known as MPA. And he's presenting about mass ports networks. So, Captain Singer, the virtual floor is yours, and we are expecting an interesting presentation. Thank you very much in advance. Um, sir, we cannot hear you. I think you are muted on your computer. Can you please check? Sir, can you hear to the voice from Ms. Mr. Sagar, Captain Sagar? We cannot hear to his voice from. Um, I believe that our console is trying to resolve uh, the technical issue right away, so we will uh, try to log on to Captain Sagar shortly. Um, Dr. Han, did you were you able to hear uh, Captain Cigar? Uh, Captain Cigar, yes. Can you try once again, please? Hello, Captain Cigar. Can you read us? So, Axel, why don't you? Start the presentation made by Annette from. Annette, yes, uh, I think there will be the backup. Uh, I think we will just have a second to see if the technicians can handle that. So, Mr. Seeker, can you read us? I think and Captain Seeker so uh, was having some technical problems because he had in his ear. Okay, let me. Yes. So. Okay, then we, then I hope uh, that Annette is uh, ready to present, uh, and yeah, she is, thank you very much. So, uh, uh, I think uh, we will have then a presentation of uh, Captain Sager later on, and uh, we will not miss that. So, moving uh, to the next thing, let us invite uh, Annette Dutta Sager from the Danish Maritime Authority for a presentation of digitalization of certificates, I think. Security and cyber issue is a really big issue, and digitalization and e-navigation can help us here. So, I'm very interested about uh, your talk about secure data sharing with blockchain technology. Uh, please, the floor is here, and that will be appreciate your presentation. Thank you. And can you see everyone okay from here? 
Yes, thank you. You are very clear. So uh, let me start by thanking you for giving me the word, Mr. Han, and also I would like to congratulate uh, this uh, uh, conference for moving into the digital area. It's uh, great to see how uh, how things work. Maybe not all the time with the audio, but the you know, the big lines, things are working really, really well, and it's impressive that we can do it in this way. Just uh, being together across the world uh, is also. Uh, I would like to share some of our uh, experiences uh, in implementing uh, digitalization projects and also, as you mentioned, uh, looking into uh, the security and the cyber security around all these data that we would like to work with in a digital way in the future. The next slide, please. Uh, we uh, started out thinking about uh, how to digitalize uh, ship registration in Denmark. Uh, yes, when you look into our website, uh, this is a picture you get. You can see the forms for registration. They're not really in paper, but a lot of the, the work being done here in the DNA, the Danish Maritime Authority, is uh, still paper-based. And also, there's a lot of paper concerning the, the voyage of the ship. Uh, the ship certificates and also the certificates for the seafarers. So we started out thinking about uh, changing this into a, a constant data flow that would be more accessible, more secure. You wouldn't, in the same way, you have to uh, lose a copy of a paper and uh, maybe be retained in a post second trial. Uh, but, but the focus was definitely on the uh, administrative burdens uh, around the ship age and also the practical issues of handling all this data, all the paper. So uh, the next slide, please. So when you trade ships today, there's a lot of uh, paper changing hands, and uh, the, it's of course shipping is global, so you can have uh, ships registered in one register across the world. You might have some management company handling the papers, so the deeds and uh, the mortgage uh, documents in a different country, and you have a lot of people uh, handling all this business that also have to sometimes meet across the world, travel, and bring papers from uh, one end of the world to the other. And our idea was could we maybe uh, make this into one smooth digital operation? And uh, we were very aware from the beginning that we would have to make this setting very safe and very secure, and that we needed the trust of everybody uh, around the world in order to make this a success. So we started looking into uh, smart contracts and blockchain technology in order to make uh, all these trends actions uh, secure. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we started off actually doing a small blockchain uh, lab uh, across the government uh, authorities in Denmark in order to share our knowledge and actually have a place where you could do some safe testing and maybe uh, make sure that not everybody is almost in the same way as uh, in this in a global context, but starting off in Denmark saying you could have this place where you could do some testing for free, but uh, the only cost would be that you shared your uh, experiences and made sure that other people could benefit from them and then maybe build onto the experiences uh, that, uh, that you made so that you didn't have to start from scratch every time. Uh, and this actually saved us quite a few uh, analysis and, and basic tests because we found out that other people really do into the same idea. So I just want to recommend that uh, mode of working because it actually saves a lot of money in the end and time, of course. Next slide. What we did was look into this blockchain technology and to make it a very complex uh, topic and really simpler. It's actually a, a way of sharing the same data to a lot of different participants and uh, through this openness um, adding security to uh, what the data you do to share. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we very fast we found out that uh, it's 
kind of difficult to share data uh, in a public uh, network. We would definitely feel more secure if we knew which other authorities, for instance, or participants at least, uh, were in the network, so we couldn't suddenly have a 51% majority changing the truth of what was in our ship register. So we quite uh, fast we decided that we were not going for a public network, but definitely a private one. Uh, next slide. Uh, we also looked uh, very much into the, the GDPR uh, issues that are uh, in focus, I think, everywhere in the world, but uh, uh, definitely in Europe, there's a very much focus on not to uh, share confident data without uh, definitely in the, in the area of uh, personal data. So what we decided was not to have a ledger network where we shared uh, data, but we would only share uh, encrypted versions of uh, the data or the hashed values, as you say, in the blockchain uh, um, language, if you can call it that. Um, so, the next slide shows that uh, the, uh, the transformation of uh, the business processes in the English Maritime Authority, where today you have, uh, uh, you have owners uh, applying for, to be registered and have their ship registered in the authority, you have deeds that are paper based and mortgage documents and user rights, and they are all in paper. And once they are, they are signed and handled, you have uh, a, a certificate for the ship that is also issued in paper. There's also a digital version, but in the practical life, it's very much the paper documents that are in focus. Uh, so we wanted to change this, and uh, the next slide shows how we, we wanted it uh, we wanted to be, and we're actually in the, in the last part of the, um, of the uh, project. So the idea is that you, you apply uh, for a ship to be registered, and you can also use this, you can use a digital uh, format to do that. But the most uh, interesting thing is that the outcome of the registration process, the ship register, the mortgage deed, uh, the actual ownership deed, all this information is now in data, it's data-based. You have the possibility to take a printout and have it verified in the DNA, but the idea is that it is all changed into uh, data and it is the data that is valid in the end. So this is a very big change. And uh, of course, uh, my focus also in this presentation is how to secure the trust globally and also the data validity and the integrity. So, the next slide shows that uh, the, the actual uh, ownership and the, the mortgage documents is a very small part of what is in focus in the, the real life. We, and we are having other projects that are looking into other sites of um, of uh, this world around the ship. And of course, we have the seafarers that have their own personal certificates. We have one project looking into digitalizing those and giving the uh, seafarers the, uh, the opportunity to be in control of their own data, to always uh, have them accessible uh, through uh, an online version, web based, but also in an app version, they can bring them along with you offline in case you should be on the ship with not so much uh, connectivity. The idea is also that we, um, we can provide the data from these certificates and also of the ship's certificates to uh, an online or offline version about the ship. You can have the ship owner management company accessing all this data on a consent-based uh, uh, system, so the seafarers actually consent to share their personal data with their employer. Uh, they can always retract this uh, consent. It might be difficult to keep your job, but you have the right and the ownership to your own data. Once uh, this consent is given, the, the, the owner of the ship has access to, uh, to these data, and the can, captain can also, in an offline version, uh, have uh, access to all this data online. Um, the idea is also that we can share uh, this data with post control 
that offices, but also that the policy control officers on board the ship should be able to actually prepare the control uh, visit on the ship uh, before actually going onto the ship, they can verify all, all these certificates are valid and uh, it matches with the people that uh, the ship owner has uh, stated are actually on board. So we can really focus on the safety of board when we, uh, we do a, a perform a port state control uh, on board the ship. We did a very successful um, proof of concept voyage with the Mumbai mask uh, earlier this year. Uh, where we tried out, we, we had uh, a, a, a version of the system aboard the ship, and we invited, we planned the world a little bit in, in advance, and we made uh, agreements with the port authorities in, uh, in Germany, Morocco, Singapore, uh, China, and also South uh, Korea. And uh, we asked them to, win if you perform, perform a, a person control aboard the ship, would you feel safe looking into this uh, this digital version of the certific certificates would that work in real life? And I think this is a very important uh, step when you deal with a global uh, industry and also global authority um, community that you actually show how could this work in real life and you test it practically. Uh, and actually, uh, we got uh, a few uh, improvement uh, uh, suggestions, but also we got a lot of uh, positive feedback saying so this would actually make things uh, easier. And the, the beauty of this is that it makes things more secure and easier for everybody around the ship voyage. For the seafarers, the ships, the captains, and the port state control, and the uh, new. It seems to us that nobody is really interested in keeping up this paper trail. Everybody would like it to be a uh, function in a better way. Okay. Um, yes. So the next slide shows that once you have this digital data flow, yeah. it is, of course, extremely, uh, extremely important yeah. that uh, the data is valid, that people can can actually trust that it has been issued by the Danish Maritime Authority if it's one of our ships, and uh, that the data has been changed since we uh, we put it out there. Uh, and um, that is in this context that we use the, the blockchain technology. Uh, so in, uh, if you would change to the next slide. Uh, this is how we see the global setup from our point of view. So the, um, on the left side of the slide, you can see that the regulators and, and the, the persons interested in, in this data at the ships and the policy control authorities all have access to the data uh, directly uh, through a PC, a, a web page, or even a phone. Uh, if you go to the left side, you have, you have the authority uh, part Oh, maybe run back, sorry. Um, we, this uh, right side of, of the slide shows that we do not share necessarily the data, but we give other authorities through an API um, the possibility to look up data that is necessary. Uh, they don't share, or they don't uh, get a copy, and they don't have to, to actually access the data and, and, uh, and handle it, but they all, always have the possibility to look, look into our data. So it is our responsibility that the data is okay, and the only thing you actually um, share is the hashed values. So if another authority looks at the ship uh, certificate, they can, they can at the same time access the blockchain network and get the information that the data has not been changed and that it has been, uh, if, if normally this data is uh, refreshed every hour, that this flow is as expected and that no one has changed it. So the blockchain network is between authorities or other participants, but it only functions as a verification of the data that we give access to. Uh, the next slide shows that um, 
it's not an easy uh, slide, but it actually shows that we have a lot of backend uh, systems in the DNA. Uh, and I'm very sure that other authorities have their own kind of systems and, and it's an impossible uh, job to, to align all these systems and make them the same. So we back to the, the last presentation. It is so important that what we agree on is the standards on how we exchange data and maybe also how we secure data. Uh, this is one way to do it, but I'm, my, my point is just that, that you could should be able to, to participate in in, in this data security network without having to change your own system at all. What we, uh, what we did is uh, in the middle there's a, a small green uh, box with the, the headline Denmark. We added a blockchain security layer onto our uh, system, uh, systems and uh, it is compared to the rest a pretty small add-on. And the idea is that other countries could also add something with a similar blockchain security layer onto their systems, and so we could share the way of securing the data. Uh, right now, we have actually put this blockchain uh, system into uh, it, it, it's it's done and, and ready to use. Now we are just waiting for, for the data to flow into the systems uh, from our the hashed values to flow into uh, the system from our other systems. And, and we are starting to cooperate with other authorities on how to uh, make this happen in, uh, in real life. Uh, but we have a, a, a fine um, proof of concept going actually on how we could uh, how we could uh, agree on which data and which standards for data that uh, could be encrypted uh, with Norway, and we have successfully proven that that we could we have the same data. That's the beauty of the maritime community that the data that we actually need is very much alike. So it should be possible uh, to to agree on some data standards for the main. Uh, um, information in this data set. We are of course uh, taking, have been taking into uh, 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 account what the IMO has uh, done uh, in the data standard uh, uh, area and also uh, the ISO uh, standardization work. Um, but but uh, with this basis, there has been a need for very few improvements. Uh, uh, and maybe not improvements, but just details in the proof of concept with Norway. And we are now starting the dialogue with uh, South Korea also on how to, to expand this network. And the idea is if, if uh, the important players could agree on a practical standard and what is really important, then it would be much easier to, to actually uh, get to a common standard also in this area of, uh, of securing the data. So uh, this uh, concludes my presentations, and uh, I'm uh, looking forward to the next one. So uh, before we hand it off to you, uh, Mr. Han, the moderator, uh, we would just like to mention that uh, we have now cleared the issue uh, with uh, Captain Cigar, and we are good to go with, uh, with his presentation. Um, let us just check once again whether we can hear him well. Uh, Captain Cigar, can you hear us, and can you speak for... Good day, can you hear me? Yes, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can I start? Can I go? <laughs> Before something else happens. <laughs> Okay, if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you very good, but first of all, let me thank Annette for an interesting, uh, interesting talk. So thank you very much, and uh, do not forget that, because it's very, it was very, very interesting, and uh, excuse uh, me on behalf of the organization for, for maybe um, a distorted noise quality, but I think we can understand it very well. Mr. Sega, Captain, now it's your floor. Just try your best to give us a very interesting talk on mess on parts. Thank you very much. Go ahead. 
Thank you. Can I quickly uh, thank the organizers first, uh, Ministry of Oceans and Fishery, Republic of Korea, Ayala, and uh, Danish Maritime Authority for, for doing a fantastic job in organizing this uh, conference. I would also like to thank for inviting me. This is definitely an exciting time for the maritime industry as digitalization and automation are set to challenge our assumptions and transform our industry. Next slide, please. Many of us have been looking on plans, initiatives, and test building projects to develop maritime autonomous surface ships in short mass. The introduction of mass operations brings about an extensive range of topics for discussion. It challenges our assumptions and norms on the assumed weapon of the ship to how information is received. The more we learn, the less we know. It is therefore a timely opportunity for flag, postal, and port authorities to collectively address challenges and to achieve alignment of standards for operating us globally. It is also imperative to develop common global standards for interoperability among different port systems supporting ocean-going mass operations. It is with this in mind that we have launched the mass ports. Next slide, please. There are many challenges to overcome for mass. Just as the theme of this year conference suggests, it is important to set mass off on the right foot, and collaboration is the key. Across countries and organizations, China, Denmark, Finland, Japan, Port of Rotterdam, Norway, Republic of Korea, and Singapore, we believe in working together, turning challenges into opportunities. The network has set ourselves ambitious yet achievable targets. Over the following months, the network will develop detailed guidelines and conditions for mass trials in the port. Establish common terminology, form and standards to make sure things can interoperate across different ports and facilitate port-to-port -port mass trials. Next slide, please. As a network, we aim to agree on guidelines and conditions within ports, which will also be kept in line with IMO interim guidelines. To address the challenges of mass operations in port, trials and developments could begin in inland ports as well as short sea voyages. And adopting these guidelines developed for ocean-going mass operations. This will be a reiterative process where members will review and refine the guidelines and conditions developed with the experience gained from applications. Uh, next slide, please. Second, to enable systems to interoperate across different parts, the network aims to establish common terminology, form and standards for communication, ship reporting, and data exchange. We want to make sure Existing information is also digitally integrated and incorporated into the development of mass technology. This will allow the international ports to be more accessible to mass, especially since the vessel did not apply yet another set of standards or use unique systems when operating within different ports. Next slide, please. If all goes well, we look forward to facilitating port-to-port mass trials. These trials will best emulate the international nature of shipping, validating 
the conditions for mass trials in pods that the network set out, as well as testing the interoperability of pod-based systems. Next slide, please. In the case of Singapore, we envisage to be a future-ready port for mass operation, a vision that will allow for coexistence of mass and conventional manned ships within our port waters. Critical to this vision is the heart and software for the port. This includes shore-based communication infrastructure, as well as next generation port in infrastructure, which is capable of interacting with smarter ships. These are complemented with auxiliary support services, including legal, insurance, academics, and classification societies. To bring our port closer to this vision, Singapore set up a steering committee, committee which includes stakeholders from government agencies, the shipping association, technology developers, and research community. This steering committee looks at questions such as what are the new modes of pilot services that would be needed for mass? What kind of new regulation in port are required to allow mass to operate safely in our port? And how do we build the capabilities required to support mass operations in port? With these questions in mind, we are glad to work with like-minded countries and organizations who are aligned with our vision in shaping the future of international shipping. Our collaborative efforts will bring our industry towards realizing a future where Mars will coexist with man ships. We look forward to sharing the outcomes and findings of the Mars sports at international forums as well as industry platforms. Thank you. That's all I have. Yeah, so um, yeah, we, we now we manage that. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, now we move from uh, Singapore around the world. Uh, and now we are very pleased, I'm very pleased that I can introduce Julian uh, uh, Carson Jackson from the Nordic Institute to present her talk about international cooperation on maritime digitalization. And perhaps it's time to have your smartphone ready. <laughs> Thank you very much, Axel. That's a very good idea. So I hope you can all hear me. Axel, can you please just nod your head if you can hear me? Very excellent. I want to thank you very much for that introduction, and this session has been so interesting. And thank you for the opportunity to be here at this event. And I'll say be here because I feel like I am there. We are all virtually at this event. Uh, so my name is I am President of the Nautical. I've been asked to talk about cooperation. Uh, in maritime digitalization. And I'll just jump right into it. If I can have my slides, please. I'm not sure what's going on yet. Well, I'll just get going then. Uh, in the maritime industry, I'm going to go to the next slide, right? The maritime industry is in the midst of a digital revolution. Over the last decades, we have seen increased digitalization from the introduction of the digital select calling. Um, as part of the global maritime stress safety system and the development of the automatic identification system, as well as the VHF data exchange. So today, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go a little bit back to basics, take a look at areas of cooperation, and um, yeah, next slide, please. We're right there. Areas of cooperation, levels of cooperation, and then finally, I want. But first of all, as Axel said, I'd like you to have your smartphones handy. So next, please. We'll put up the next slide. 
I'd like you to, on your smartphone, if you can see your smartphone, open it up and open up a window and go to menti.com. And when you're at menti.com, we'll put this in presentation for you now. There we go. On menti.com, I want you to enter that code 1990388. That's 1990388. And it will open a window that will ask you for some words on what does cooperation mean to you. So I'd like you to enter in one word, two words, three words. What does cooperation mean to you? And at the bottom, make sure you click Submit. And we're going to build a word cloud on what cooperation means to you. So we're seeing some coming in now. And so you put, it doesn't have to be three. If you can't think of three, harmonization seems to be winning right now. Collaboration, together, that's pretty good. Alliance, oh, that's a good one. Alliance. Harmonization still be And we're getting lots coming in now. This word cloud is building and changing as I'm looking. Harmonization, ah, together is growing up. So we are looking at what cooperation means to us. And I will leave this open. We'll continue to build this word cloud. But I'd like to move now on to my slide. And we'll move in, and together and harmonization seems to be those key words. Common interest is coming up soon. So we'll leave that menti open and continue to add your words. At the end of the presentation, I will download and include the word cloud that we've made at the end of this event. So if I could go back to my presentation, please. Now that we know what cooperation is, I kind of want to go to some of these other terms. I present on going digital in Maritime. And there seems to be confusion between digitization and digitalization. They're hard enough in English to get your head around so I can understand that. And I thought uh, that this workingmouse.com.au could help us. So digitization is that simply taking what we do, those paper documents, for example, and putting them in a digital form. But digitalization is so much more. It's about using the digital environment to do more, to be collaborative, to share, to harmonize, to have that cooperative approach. Next, please. So, what are the areas of cooperation? Why do we need to cooperate? Well, if we look at the basics, it's about operational requirements. It's the user needs. Think about these operational requirements because they're so many and they are varied. In maritime, we tend to think on the ship and immediately around the ship, aids to navigation and the port environment. Digitalization helps us see a broader area. As Michael said yesterday, reaching into the internet. The why moves beyond a specific to a more global holistic why. Safe, secure, efficient, environmentally friendly operation that supports sustainability. The what, the what is more the technology. And there is a lot of technology. Technology is developing so fast. Our why and our technology go together. Ideally, we can adopt existing technology or adapt it. And the technology, our what and our why will be iterative. They will develop together. Then there's the how, and we've talked about it already, standardization. Standardization of data formats, of technical transfers, but also this concept of standardizing methodologies. 
measuring how we work and looking at our standard operating procedure. So we have standardization at technical level, but also at the operational level. Next, please. So then, what are these levels of cooperation? Who is cooperating? And I was asked to talk on international cooperation as I researched it. The cooperation is at so many different levels. Uh, I could draw a, a web, a spider's web, amongst the international bodies, national bodies, regional groupings, universities, academics, and the industry. So the users, the providers, they are building this who element. Next, please. And we've seen it. It's in action. So international, regional, industry, cooperation, innovation is in action now. I don't want to go into detail. There's so many examples. I've just pulled a few off of my feed. I had to put SPM up there. But the rest of these are all within the last week, announcements of cooperation. Innovation means that technology may outstrip those standards that we were talking about. Standards take time to develop. We need practical solutions that can be identified for the requirement, but we need them now. And we have this lag or this option that this concern that there will be lag. I'd like to get your input once again, so I'd like you to pull out those phones one more time. If we go to the next slide, please. And I have three statements. So after you've submitted that first one, you will see there are three statements. So we need to go to the next, click to the next one, please. Statements, yep. You can click onto the statements. Uh, just click next on the presentation. There you go. Ah, you got it. Oh, we've got people answering already. So, how much do you agree or disagree with these statements? The first statement is digitalization will revolutionize the maritime industry. The next one is, there are clearly defined use cases, those requirements for digital data exchange. My third question is, the maritime industry has an effective approach to standardization. I'm going to leave that up just for a few seconds so you have a chance to enter your thoughts. That's very interesting. We're seeing some I think we've got a pretty strong agreement that digitalization will revolutionize the maritime industry. That's looking pretty clear to me. The use cases, pretty good. Not quite all there. Maybe a bit of concern about the fact that the maritime industry uh, approach to digitalization. People are pretty well sitting on the bar there, on the, on the fence. Um, again, I'm going to leave this open, but I'd like to move back to the presentation. You can continue to answer, and at the end of this presentation, I will download the results and we'll provide those. If we go to the next slide, it's interesting about standardization. Because if we think about digital, the digital communications that we use now, uh, if I go back to my slide, the digital communications that we use now, that 3G, the 4G, and now the 5G. What you've just used on your phone is making use of these digital communications. If you can remember back to 3G and then into 4G, which really wasn't that long ago, I'd like to go to the next, so click next again. And this is a bit of a timeline. The 3GPP, or the third generation partnership program that has been developing the technologies, and we heard about LTE and LTE Maritime yesterday within the 4G, they develop in a process for standardization that is based on an industry approach with four releases a year. So you see how we are growing. 
On the top bar, I put the 1G, 2G across, and on the bottom, you can see some of the more specific maritime approaches that we've used with standardization. So standardization at the digital level can be very complex. If we go to the next slide, it's a very complex environment. Next, please. And you won't be able to make this out because you're not supposed to. It's very complex. So this is the Internet of Things, the standardization organization of the developments. And you can see they've got a number of verticals as well as the horizontal with the telecommunications. Now, some of those symbols, some of those uh, images might be familiar. You've got IEEE, you've got ISO, you've got IEC. But there are so many different aspects to this Internet of Things and standardization. It can be very difficult. So I go back to my other comment. If we can adopt or adapt existing and only develop if, at all, if the very last case. So I go to my next slide, please. So the opportunities and challenges for the future. Well, we have our requirements. We have our technology, and we have this need for standards all working together. Next, please. Within the framework of the different entities, international, regional, national, the universities, the industry, all working together. This provides us great opportunities, but also challenges, because we're trying to build this network, use this myriad of, of capability to our best advantage. And it comes down to knowing what we want and why we want it, and knowing that will change. Recognizing there are different technologies that could be used, and linking it through these standards. Next, please. So a bit of a look to the future, and you could bring these up. Next, please. Yes. We want to move beyond digitization to digitalization. And the technology can be used to improve, to grow, and to enhance. Next, please. Considering the why and the who and the fact that they will be iterative, things will develop. What and how will come. It's not what we do now. It's but what we can do and what we can do better. Next, please. Ideally, we can adapt or adopt technologies and only develop technology as a last resort. In the maritime, it was mentioned yesterday, we don't have a large a base. So it's not a, a financial valid base to develop our own tools when there are other tools out there that we could use. Next, please. And we can learn from the work of others. We know that there are other organizations that are developing standards very rapidly, being agile, but not being perfect. And finally, what we need to do, next, please. We need to remember that what we need Today will not be what we need tomorrow. We can grow and enhance, and we can look to a future that is difficult to imagine because even six months ago, could we have imagined having an online digital conference? So we have to know what we need today is not going to be what we need tomorrow. We want to build for beyond then. Next, please. So perfection is not attainable, we know that, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity to have an international conference during a global pandemic. So thank you very much, Lily, and uh... Thank you also for your presentation and the kind last words. Um, 
So now we are, as I see, in the question and answer session. We are some minutes over the time, but uh, I think uh, we have a short time to have uh, uh, some questions here. I got a question by a different channel. Uh, Jepper, uh, uh, the question was about uh, the come maritime data model and uh, file your presentation, and there was a question about uh, reference to all the S100 activities. Do you have a statement on that? Yes, uh, thank you, Axel. Um, it was a very interesting uh, question, actually. And uh, uh, Mrs. Dennis, Denise uh, is, is absolutely right in saying uh, that there is a, a data set related to the S100, which is not fully included in the IMO reference model yet. It is so that uh, the IMO reference data model is developed in an in incremental uh, way, which means that we have now included all the elements from the FAL convention, and now we go beyond what is required according to the FAL convention. Um, and that is operational data. It is also uh, uh, administrative data, which goes beyond the FAL convention. Um, and all that will be added as part of individual data sets on top of what is already in the data set. So for instance, uh, at the, the forthcoming uh, expert group, we will consider data set on maritime services. We will discuss uh, a data set on uh, certificates and also stowaways. So that will be included in the data set when, when discussed and, and, uh, and uh, applied to the data model and then adopted by the FAL convention. But it is the IHO in that regard should take the initiative to submit the relevant data set to the IMO. Okay, thank you very much. I've got another question here via the conference management team. So I think there is time for another short question, another short answer. Uh, there's Hans was asking Annette Dubathinger about uh, how do you resolve the issue of remote areas in the world where insufficient data communication may exist? Definitely not Denmark in mind. And that you so with us yet. Uh, um, there's, there's different layers in the question. I, I believe if you are talking about the seafarers and the ships, uh, the, uh, the way to handle it is to actually download the information about the data you need on certificates uh, for, for the personal certificates and the ship certificates when you are in is it a harbor or whenever you have connectivity, and then you keep it offline with you. If you're talking about uh, issues and the uh, port state control officers, uh, I, I think what we hear is that the issue is smaller because it is easier to have uh, to attain connectivity in the authorities, especially in the back offices, and then also they could have the opportunity to, to download information and bring them aboard if they want to do some checkups, um, maybe to verify that the people aboard look uh, the same as the picture in their personal certificates. So, so the idea is that you have some things, you need connectivity, but you also have the offline possibility if you want to take the data with you into some remote area. I hope this answers the question. No, thank you very much. Uh, so I think from my perspective, I thank you very much for all the questions. I would like to pass uh, to uh, Dr. Hong, uh, if there's any questions from the audience or to lead to the next session. So thank you very much to all the presentations, a warm hand. Uh, from my side, on behalf of all the listeners, and thank you very much. And back now to the headquarters of this conference in Korea. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Axel, for your excellent reading the session. And uh, I, 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 I'm now see a, a the audience who has a questions with this session, Axel. 
Uh, his question is related to the Massport network presented by uh, Captain Sega from Singapore. Uh, the, he is a project manager of a Korean project regarding the autonomous ship, and uh, he said Massport network according to the presentation made by Captain Sagar, uh, is focused on the autonomous ships and port for marine digital technology. And he asked if the Captain Sagar has some uh, plan or opinion on the future cooperation with the series of navigation on the way conference in terms of the connectivity and compatibility with the navigation. That is the question. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, you're clear, okay. Captain Sagar. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, in working towards a future where autonomous ships become an integral part of the shipping and the global supply chain, we need to consider how ports, along with its procedures, infrastructure, services and systems can support these smart ships. Mass ports and e-navigation share similar aspirations for ships of the future. For ocean-going mass to become a reality, digitalization of marine services through e-navigation will be essential. We need systems that are compatible connections that are secure and reliable so that e-navigation and other smart shipping functions can operate as they should. To keep ourselves plugged into the global developments, mass ports and the e-navigation underway conference could look out for opportunities to collaborate in sharing expertise on the developments that could be relevant to each other. As the Danish Maritime Authority and Republic of Korea's Ministry of Fishery Oceans are members to the mass port as well, I think we can look forward to more synergies in the e-navigation and ILR communi communities. Thank you. I hope I answered your question. Well, yes, uh, thank you for that answer as well. Well, I think that this wraps up the Q&A session. Um, thank you once again. Uh, please give another big round of applause for the presenters as well as the moderator. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I believe that now it is time for us to move on to session four. And session four is under the theme of Digital at Sea Initiative, right? Yeah, right. Thank you, and thank you everyone. This session is about the digital sea initiatives. As you know, the starting with the navigation underway conference, international organized by Danish Maritime Authority in 2012, the series of the navigation underway conference, including North America and Asia Pacific, have served as a as a kind of catalyst for practical and international development and implementation of navigation up to now. The Digital SG initiative is to figure out the future direction for international collaboration on various marine digital technologies such as autonomous ships and navigation as well for the shake of facilitating international harmonization between such digital technologies. So Jun, we have a three speakers in this session. So would you please introduce first the speaker? Yes, uh, the first speaker will be Mr. Min Soo Chun. Uh, he's actually participating online. So he will present under the theme, concept and scope of the digital at sea in approach. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome him with a big round of applause. Okay, Miss, are you ready? You got the floor. Okay, uh, do you hear me now? Yeah, you are very clear. Okay, thank you for your kind introduction, Mr. 
and the main area to the production of the Now, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for hosting this first virtual e navigation on the web conference just successfully. So, what I'd like to cover today is the third digital SP, which is an expanded version of the e navigation on the web. So, under this new initiative, we have two processes and capacity building and the cluster. When my next speakers will dig into this, so I'd like to uh, more focus on the technical part and some history and the changes in the trends over the last 10 years of the e navigation on the way. So, if I may, can I go to the next slide, please? So the e navigation on the way series just started in 2011 as one of the deliverables of the efficiency project. Since the IMO developed, the e navigation strategy for the development and implementation in 2008, I like to say the e navigation on the way significantly contributed in the shaping up and describing the e navigation concept to the trials and testbed and defining the user requirements and introduced new technologies regarding e-navigation. And as the regional conferences, uh, North America uh, joined in 2014, and this Asia-Pacific conference joined the series in 2017. With a 10-year-old history, the e-navigation underway became the bend of the development of e-navigation, more than just presenting the papers. On behalf of Iowa, I would like to thank the dedicated support from the Danish Maritime Authority and the Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries of Korea. And I, I also like to thank Papa uh, and Bavnia from the States for their very hard work for the events in the region. And next slide, please. Uh, from the beginning, the conference was held on a passenger ship. Which is shuttle between uh, Copenhagen and Oslo. This unique venue gave an excellent opportunity to demonstrate the live e navigation solutions and trials during the conference. Looking at the agenda of the very first meeting, the main topics were hearing from various test beds around the world, what can shore side authorities bring to e navigation, and the expected role of international organizations. And the new technologies. Uh, next slide, please. I will see the conference completing some recommendations for the last 10 years. And in the early years, if I may brief you, the conclusions of the conference this work, the e navigation implementation should be a progress of evolution rather than revolution. And the needs for standards standard and regulation were emphasized. And it was recognized that the value of testbed and integrated bridge system as a user centric approach. And the framework had been developed and named as SIP. And the commercial benefit is a major driver. And after that, cyber security and maritime connected platform can learn. And additionally, I did an analysis of the work in the paper. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? These two bodies show the words mentioned in the proceedings and the reports of the conferences. Depending on the numbers written in the paper, more mentioned words are bigger. So this is what we saw uh, from Julian's presentation. Uh, from this, we could get a rough idea or the changes in the trends in the paper at least. I feel that at the beginning, on the left side, those of the existing names of the technologies, information, and the systems were mentioned the most. And the main question at that time was what? What is the expected future of the maritime environment with the e navigation development? And some of them were answered in the last 10 years. And over the years, the question become how. Okay, now 
how can we harmonize? How can we get the interoperability and standardization? And we can see on the right table, including such as a service, presentation, a development, and information, and, and etc. From yesterday and today, uh, from the presentations, I was able to see that some technologies are natural, harmonized in a way. And now we are moving to a functional, practical area. Next slide, please. These key words are mainly extracted from the papers and the related report. To see the changes, I categorize the key words into project, standards, and maritime services, and data modeling, and connectivity and communication, ENT, and new technology. Uh, disclaimer. Some of you might argue a few years are not the better place, but my point is how many initiative project standards are finished and still going on. It is evident that we need to keep harmonizing. The key of the success is the technical cooperation on a, on a global scale. Now what I can see in the industry is the communication channel will be there very soon. As we said yesterday, LTM is one of the strongest candidates and two possible options, such as BDS and 5G, including wind terrestrial communication, with the satellite components are coming very soon. As the mega trend and the first industrial revolution, with the development of IoT, big data, blockchain, 3G printing, and AI, Services. These will enhance and benefit the development of innovation. I look forward to, I look forward to seeing what will come next the development of good navigation and of this new initiative, Digital SD. Uh, next slide, please. So, this explains why we are expanding. Concept as well, uh, to all digital agenda in the maritime sector, including mass, smart logistics, and ports. Special thanks to DNA for leading this initiative, and their information will be presented at Twitter. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, <laughs> for your presentation on the whole concept of the Digital IC initiatives. And June, we have another speaker, Miss Linda Osterhold from Danish Maritime Authority. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, Linda, are you ready? I am ready. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, you are very clear and loud. Uh, you are going to present on the series of digital IC conferences, right? You have the floor. Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen from all over the world. And uh, thank you, Mr. Han, for handing over the word. First of all, uh, I would like to congratulate the Ministry of Ocean and Fisheries on the, this successful online conference over the past uh, two days. It has been mentioned several times that we need to continue uh, our collaboration, even in we are in these times with the COVID-19, and uh, this conference is a great example that when we face these challenges, we will find new digital solutions and new ways of meeting. Can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Now, um, I, um, and Ayala also mentioned this, um, that the first e-navigation conferences uh, was hosted by IL and DMA back in 2011, so that's nine years ago. The, uh, the conference originally started as a part of the efficiency project, and um, the general purpose of the conference was to promote e-navigation, furthering its application and uh, exploitation for the entire maritime community. Consistent with this, the conference has also served as a platform for information sharing and uh, 
This could be about testbed activities and other developments and experiences. In 2014, as it was also mentioned, then the campus took the first move to another part of the world where it took place in North America. And in 2017, um, the conference has been organized successfully in Asia Pacific. The conference has natu naturally developed a uh, time and new knowledge and ideas have been shared and exchanged and new friendships have been built and new um, collaboration has been established. Now the world is changing and it, uh, so will these e-navigation underway conference series. If you can go to the next slide, please. As Mr. Nord said also very well put it in his speech yesterday, when uh, what got us here will not necessarily get us there. So we need to continually, continuously think of new ways and create new momentums for collaboration. Uh, Secretary General from Ayala, Mr. Francis uh, Zachary, also revealed yesterday that the e-navigation underway conferences will change scope, and in the future they will cover a broader digital agenda for the maritime sector. And with this change of scope, a new name for the conferences have also been found its way. And in the 2021, the e-navigation underway conferences, they will change their names into digital sea. So they mean, this means that in 2021, we will see a digital sea international conference, a digital sea North America conference, and a digital sea Asia Pacific conference. Can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Now, for the um, Digital Sea International Conference, it is normally organized in the beginning of the year. But however, due to this COVID-19 situation, DMA is currently looking into uh, digital solutions with a great inspiration from, from this conference, this year's e-navigation under Asia Pacific. Now, you will be able to find uh, more information about other conferences uh, in these websites. Um, so you can read more in dma.dk. There will also be information shared, just like with the e-navigation conferences in the, the YALA website, and uh, where you also find information about news and events. And then, of course, in the uh, enav.org uh, website, which will change to digital C. So with this, we look forward to welcome you to these new conference series in 2021, and we hope to see you there and hope you will join us. So thank you for listening in. And with this, um, I will hand it back the word to you, Mr. Hong. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ms. Linda, for your presentation. Uh, it was brief, but also all of the great contents were there. Uh, we do wish we can, uh, we will be able to see you in person next year as well. And I believe <laughs> our next presenter is uh, Mr. Sun Bae Hong himself, right, uh, Mr. Hong? Yeah, right. Yes, that's correct. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's invite <coughs> our host slash uh, presenter uh, for the next presentation. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Julia. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. To the people from the European side. Then I will start my presentation. Uh, the, uh, actually, the original title on the presentation that I wanted to choose is like this, the Global E-Navigation Route Testbed. Uh, it is because I'd like to propose this as one of the, the first collaboration testbed under the digital SG test bed cluster through my presentation today. I will first present the thesis as the background of proposing the global e-navigation route test bed, then analysis of the related current situation, and lastly, my methodology on how to carry out the test bed. I forgot to change my slide by myself. Yeah. The, my thesis has two approaches. 
the theoretical and empirical. The World Maritime Community says, in navigation will provide with many kinds of benefits like this. The IMO said in its navigation strategy implementation plan that the navigation will cut off 65% of ships collision and around accidents. I saw this uh, some article on newspaper, the post CDM co uh, collective decision making maybe. This community says that port operation and cost will be saved up to 12 billion US dollars globally. And also I would say that ships bunker would be saved up to amount of 10 billion US dollars globally. In navigation is, uh, is a lot of, uh, is a kind of stepping stone towards the fourth industrial revolution in maritime sector too. Then why a lot of concerns on e navigation are over there still in these days? I will explain this by uh, role play together with Julian today. And I will have the role of a computer inventor in the role play. And also, the Julian, can you help me to be a customer in the role play? I would love to. Yes, I'm an inventor of the computer, as you can see on the screen. Uh, computer is very good. It's very smart, fast calculation, and even internet is available. Why and use this computer? Hmm, but can you make it in a portable size? Because I want to be able to use it anywhere and anytime. Oh, really? I didn't know that you want a portable. Here you are. This is a portable computer and very good. No, it's not good at all because it's useless. I can't even see anything on the screen. Oh, really? You want one that you can handle by yourself? How about this? I applied pinch to zoom to meet your needs. Exactly. This is what I wanted. And because of this pinch to zoom, I can handle and use all kinds of applications on it. Exactly right. As your result, as we can watch the role play, the pinch to zoom is your core technology and services to make meet customers' needs and benefits, right? Jones, uh, what do you usually do on the subway? Mm, well. uh, don't, don't, don't answer, <laughs> I will guess. I will guess. You, you must be using your smartphone, like these people, right? Most of they the time, They are watching yes. the smartphone on the subway. And furthermore, if we ask this sorrowful man, you can understand who is now. Uh, if you ask these people what he needs most right now, so I thought to myself, he might say, yes, I need a smartphone most now. I think he might, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And there are two people, they love each other, and they meet once a week. But we can easily see this kind of situation everywhere nowadays. They are looking their own smartphone, respectively, right? Rather than communicating each other like this. Is they seems they cannot live without smartphone in these days. Then I will propose an international collaboration based on the lessons learned from the role play and episodes I had shown you on the screen. Yes, uh, we need a kind of global collaborative e-navigation route testbed so as to show 
actual benefits and effectiveness of navigation to all stakeholders. Through the test bed, the globally collaborative test bed, through the uh, global navigation road test bed, I expect that we can together facilitate global harmonization, compatibility, and standardization that are able to provide the most benefit to all stakeholders. As a result, the test bed contributes to facilitate using e-navigation services by the world maritime community, just like people using their smartphone in these days. As you can see on the slide like this, there is a world e-navigation shopping mall. There are many people queuing to buy some e-navigation services because they need e-navigation service, I hope. This slide shows some kind of challenges that I had experienced in the case of a former MOU on global e-navigation test bed. First, without the clear need to comply with digital technology to an international obligation, there is a limitation for administration to participate in the test bed. Secondly, Without uh, best practice and service instances, verifying and validating its global harmonization, effectiveness, and benefits to our stakeholders, the concerns on navigation are still listed and continued by industries and users. Then, I'm going to show you a methodology on how to carry out the digital sheet testbed cluster, especially the global e-navigation route testbed as the first testbed collaboration proposed. The cluster needs to be carried out under the goal-based collaboration to implement the service as a result of the testbed. To this end, the cluster need to make an effort to put into place the clear international obligation at IMO, while create a best practices and actual services instances at the same time. The cluster might be composed under the framework of MU on digital edge testbed as follows. First, there should be some shore-based service platform regionally. For example, this is an example, I guess, the smart navigation service platform in Korea and Nabulink, Nabulink, Nabulink service platform in Europe and Massport service platform in Singapore as a calling port of the ships, ships route from Korea to Europe. Second, the various digital communication network could be used, for example, satellite VHF data exchange system and shore-based VDS system or LTE communication like Korea. Third, the third element is the ship-borne digital platform such as ACTIS that is applied with the internationally agreed of 100 S100 data model as various stakeholders could participate in the testbed like this, maybe the Ms. Julian commented out uh, such kind of stakeholders to have some cooperation, international cooperation from the industry to the users or administration and university. Yeah, every stakeholders can participate in this testbed together to make a harmonization. And this is a time frame and roadmap I propose to carry out the global e-navigation road testbed under the digital edge initiatives. First, signing on MOU at early next year. And second, the de designing and organizing testbed by the end of next year. 
and operating test bed from the beginning of 2022. While we operating the series of digital SC conferences continuously from early next year and making joint effort to put into place the clear international obligation at IMO at the same time. And this is my conclusions with regard to the digital SC cluster, especially the proposed the global innovation road testbed as the first testbed collaboration under the MU. Uh, as I told you in my uh, presentation, maritime digitalization will provide all stakeholders with the most benefits of safety and efficiency at the same time and clear international obligation to comply with maritime digitalization is a key to facilitate participating and implementing maritime digitalization by stakeholders, shipping, ports, logistics, and administration too. It's very essential to create best practice showing actual benefits and effectiveness of maritime digitalization. So global navigation road test is is a kind of pinch to zoom to be able to show the best practice for maritime digitalization. Thank you. Thank you very much for that great presentation. And I believe that we can now move right on to Q&A. Yes, uh, I'd like to first give an opportunity to the audience in the conference studio here. Okay, uh, is there any questions? to our session. Yes. Thank you. I was uh, really greatly impressed by the, your presentation. I am John suk from Korea Maritime Safety Transportation Authority. And I have a question for Mr. Hong. So what do you think of the advantage that industrial field like technology developers can get uh, from establishing talks about a cluster as you said. Thank you for your very good question, but I expect that some audience in the studio to make a question to other speakers, for example, the Ms. Linda or uh, Mr. John in Ayala. But anyway, thank you. So you ask the benefit for stakeholders uh, if we make a such kind of test bed, right? Yes, so, right. Yeah, so I think uh, I told you during my presentation without any clearness to put into the international obligation, no stakeholders want to participate in the test bed or they do not want to introduce some kind of new digital technology in their policies the industry do not want to produce some digital product to provide some kind of services, something like that. So if we establish such kind of innovation road test bed, every stakeholders, including industries or university or administrations can participate in the test bed together to verify and validate their product and their services and their standardization. Then the test bed will facilitate harmonization of standardization of the marine digitalization of the world. It makes the facilitate introducing the maritime digitalization, which is very useful for maritime industry to increase the safety and efficiency at the same time. That is my question. Thank you. And uh, I can see several kind the questions made through website, yeah. And this is the question goes to Miss Linda Asser Hall from the Danish Maritime Authority. Uh, the question is that the e-navigation conference has focused on e-navigation related policy and technology development. Uh, it seems to be 
uh, changing to digital conference in the future. Yeah, right. The current e-navigation underway conference may be uh, replaced, uh, is to be replaced by the series of digital conference in the future. So it's going to cover the entire ocean digital technology. So Ms. Linda, the question is, is like this. Is there any particular digital technology you are focusing on in the future framework of digital SG initiatives? Linda? Can you hear me? Yeah, you are very clear. Okay. Good. Thank you for the question. Let me just read it through again. Um, so it's asked whether we will focus on only one technology. For that, for that uh, question, I'd say we're not focusing on a specific technology. I don't think we should close out any future t technologies uh, right now because we need to be able to, to embrace uh, future opportunities. So, so it's like you also mentioned, Mr. Hong. Then we have logistics, we have supply chain. It's just a lot of things that need to be connected here, and that's we have then now reached a point where we need to look into the implementation, uh, where we also need to include much more stakeholders um, in in the, the development and implementation. So I'd say. So the question then is, it's not only one technology. We will be open eye and we'll be able to embrace uh, new opportunities. And we see technology moving so fast right now. So, um, yes, I think that's the answer to the question. I hope um, it answers the question. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Linda, for your answering to the questions. Yes, uh, I think the most important thing is the cooperation and the technology should be tested and verified and validated together by the international community to make a harmonization. But such kind of collaboration and the development of technology should be goal-based goal -based for implementing among the administration of the world, then we can facilitate and actually make the, such kind of new technology introduced and used for maritime community to save their cost or increase the safety. Okay, and I have, I can see one more questions. Uh, maybe this question goes to uh, Mr. Min Su Jun from Ayala. So, the question is like this, what are your future expansion plan for digital edge initiatives? Uh, for example, do you have any plans to cooperate with other participating countries and other international organizations? I think uh, uh, the framework of digital edge initiatives and also even the uh, current series of e-navigation underway conference, uh, there is no limitation in the participation by some kind of stakeholders or countries or the other industries. But I understand this question may ask, uh, do, you, do you have any plan or do you think the, this, this digital edge initiatives need to secure some specific country or specific community to make facilitate or to secure some uh, concrete uh, effectiveness uh, from the digital edge initiatives like this. Maybe I understand the question like that. Means, uh, do you have any idea? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Hong. I agree with you. And I believe the end of the fundamental region the transform of the e-navigation underway to digital SC is the flexibility. So uh, as the initiative starts with the DMA MOF and Ayala, uh, we are expecting US Coast Guard to be on board in soon. And I hope we would welcome all the interested bodies to this initiative. 
so that is my uh, short answer to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. John. Yes, yes, of course, the, you just comment on the U.S. Coast Guard or uh, some the other organization at the level of administration that have to introduce and use in navigation service to increase the safety in the coastal waters. But uh, rather than such kind of organization, I think some the other uh, stakeholders like the big flag states, I think the big flag state is one of the very important uh, the community to facilitate the introducing the digitalization, maritime digitalization, because they have so many flags, uh, so many the fleets of the ship. So the big flag state's role is very important to facilitate this kind of collaboration and cooperation of the digitalization initiatives. And, and also, uh, the other one is, yeah, there is a, another question on the website. Yes. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, is there any comment or question from the uh, participants online by using the breakout platform now? No, so Li, Linda, do uh, don't you have any question to the other speakers? Linda, oh, are you still yeah. there? Any other? Uh, I don't have any yeah. questions right now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, <laughs> thank you. yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I have to. Uh, conclude my sessions. Uh, I can s see no more questions from the audience and from participants. So thank you so much to all speakers and to all participants uh, for your input, valuable idea to our session. And next is a closing session, right? That's so, right. Um, yeah. But before we move on, uh, shall we give another round of applause for the presenters and, of course, moderator? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes, it yeah. is the closing session now. That's yeah, right. right. Uh, be, uh, we are going to have a closing session, including first the adoption, uh, reviewing and adoption of the conference highlight first, then closing remark by Francis. So before we move on the closing session, John, will you help us to review and correct the highlight? Of course, I would be glad to. Yeah, uh, so would you please show the draft highlight on the screen? Yeah, we will first start by reviewing and adopting the conference highlight. We will see the draft highlight paragraph by paragraph and receive comments from participants to correct the draft highlight. Then, Juyan, could you introduce the highlight draft paragraph sure. by paragraph? So the first paragraph, or number one, says some 600 participants from more than 50 countries participated. 16 world known e-navigation experts presented on a variety of topics under the conference theme, collaborating to harmonize maritime digitization. Anyone have any comments or any feedback on number one? Allow me to highlight that for you. Uh, so if you have any comments or feedback or any uh, word that you would like to change, please uh, tell us. Yeah, this, the first sentence is general one, so I believe there is no comments. No comments, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank then you. Next paragraph. Yes, and number two is the conference discussed examples of the implementation of e-navigation services and noted plans for their future development. Delegates also considered the opportunities and challenges associated with adopting cutting edge technologies such as blockchain and digital maritime communications frameworks, automation on board and marine autonomous surface ships. Uh, again, if you have any comments or feedback, please let us know. 
Is there any comment on the second draft paragraph? I think everyone is quiet. So uh, if there are no comments, we will move on to the next article. Yes, yes, please. So 2-1 is the conference recognized the necessity to build a digital ecosystem for making global standardization and collaboration of maritime digitalization so as to secure more sustainable, more efficient, and safer opportunity for all stakeholders. Is there any comment on the parallel 2.1? among the audience, participants, online. And just for your reference, um, we will circulate this to you. And if you have any feedback later on, uh, we also accept it until, I believe, the 18th of September. And so you will be able to give us your feedback uh, through email as well. Uh, no. Uh, no, Julian, uh, we need to review whole, uh, whole draft highlight first. Then yes. we can, of course, we can receive Yes, of course. Comments, uh, if but, they missed yeah. it in the first time, yeah. then, yeah, they, of course, right. they have another chance to yeah. send us the feedback. Yeah. So, so please so, introduce the next paragraph. Okay. So number 2.2 .2 is uh, there was a strong emphasis on international cooperation which delegates considered was necessary to achieve harmonization and enhance safety. Test beds and sea trials were recognized as key elements to introduce and promote e-navigation services. Yeah, maybe this highlight is because of the harmonizations highlighted by many speakers during last two days of conferences. So the test bed would be a good tool to achieve the harmonization among the digital technologies. Is there any comment on this paragraph? Dr. Axel, do you have any comment on this paragraph? No, thank you. <laughs> so Everyone seems to be interview. very quiet, yes. Next paragraph. <laughs> So moving on, number 2.3 is the conference recognized that any new technologies should align with IMO's vision for e-navigation. They should be implemented based on a judicious mix of goal-based and prescriptive rules. Thank you. Is there any comment on this phrase? No? Okay, thank you. Move on to the next paragraph. Thank you. And number three now, uh, the conference noted the decision uh, to expand the scope of international cooperation using the current series of e-navigation underway conferences to include some new initiatives. I believe there is a word uh, missing. Uh, can anyone comment on this sentence, please? No, no comment. Okay, let's move on to the next paragraph, 3.1. So 3.1 is the Digital at Sea Initiative, which consists of a series of Digital at Sea international conferences with the possibility of global Digital at Sea testbed cooperation and capacity building workshops. Is there any comments on this paragraph? No? Okay, thank you. Move on to the next paragraph. Moving on. The series of digital at sea conferences will replace the current uh, the series of e-navigation underway conferences from 2021, including Digital at Sea International, Digital at Sea North American, and Digital at Sea Asia Pacific. Yes, this is a summary of the presentation made by the Mr. John Ms. John from IRA. Okay, Rich, uh, Ms. Jones, do you have any comment on that? No? Okay, thank you. Then move on to the next paragraph. 
Okay, and a 3.3. <laughs> yeah, okay. The John, you, 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 you have the floor if you have any comment. Yes, Mr. John, if you have any comments. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Han. I just uh, said I, I'm good with the sentence. Ah, yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. So moving on to 3.3. Establishing a multilateral MOU in order to facilitate and secure the effectiveness of the global test bed that contributes to international harmonization, standardization, verification, and validation of maritime digital technology through internationally joint actual C test for such technologies. Is there any comment? The highlighted part. No comment. Anyway, uh, as you know, there is a current existing MU on global e-navigation test bed, but uh, according to the expansion of the cooperation under the framework of this series of e-navigation under a conference into the, the other maritime digitalization technology, not only for the navigation, so the MOU will be uh, changed to include such kind of digital technology, not only for the navigation, such as the mass or the other communi digital communication or something like that. So this paragraph is to explain such kind of direction. No comment? Shall we move yes. on? Thank you. Chilean said no comment. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And move on to the next paragraph. 3.4 is capacity building workshops as technology cooperation programs for the sake of building capacity of developing countries so that maritime digital technology can promote shared growth among advanced and developing countries. Yeah, this paragraph is very important and especially I expect Omar has interested in these sentences as the Vice Secretary General of ILR or Francis or the other participant or the other excellent speakers have any comments on this paragraph? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you. And moving on 3.5 as the coordinator, Ayala promotes and supports Digital at Sea Initiative. Um, the Secretary General of Ayala, Francis, do you agree? Yeah, very yes. good. Yeah, he <laughs> very good. The sign. Okay. Okay, thank you yeah. for that brief uh, answer and effective answer. And moving on, um, number four, an instance of the Maritime Connectivity Platform, or MCP, was showcased during the conference. It was evident the MCP framework was a sound platform for the delivery of maritime services in the context of e-navigation. Uh, this sentence just summarized the fact we had a official showcase, but the second sentence under this phrase, MCP framework was a sound platform for delivery maritime service. Is there any comment or objection to these sentences? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank then you. Let's move on to the next. Next sentence is, discussions during the conference suggested bringing various matters to the attention of the IMO, such as the concept of digital at sea initiative, with the aim of providing opportunity for more countries to participate in global e-navigation development. Is there any comment on the last sentence? This is also very important for many kinds of countries from other regions to participate in the global e-navigation development together. Yeah, thank you, Omar. We have for your a good thumbs sign. up. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, we are going to uh, the yeah. There is a note. Participants are welcome. Suggest ad, uh, 
editorial changes to this draft highlights until Friday, 18th September. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. So uh, I'd like to propose or participant to adopt the highlights as like this. Uh, of course, uh, we are going to open this draft highlight until 18th September to receive further comments from the uh, participants online. So if you have any further comments, please send your comment on this hi highlight to my secretariat. Uh, so already know the address, email address of yes. secretary on the uh, brochure. Yes, that's yes. correct. Thank and you. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank As you. As we mentioned yeah. before, uh, yeah. you can send in your feedback if uh, you had missed it because we will be circulating the document. Um, well, thank you once again, Mr. Sumbehong, uh, for the great sessions. Um, I would like to ask if you have any final comments uh, before closing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as the organizer of this conference this time, even though this year's uh, conference was conducted online due to COVID-19 pandemic, about 700 people from 50 countries all over the world registered to this conference. I believe that many countries has interest in the maritime digitalization. Uh, Thanks all participants and all speakers for your attending and making a good presentation. And I hope you all stay healthy during these times of COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your final comment. If there are any other final comments uh, from the floor or the audience, please raise your hand. Uh, I believe that there are no other comments. So with that, I would like to invite Mr. Francis Zakarie uh, for his closing remarks. Mr. Francis, are you online? Yes, I am. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Hong and Ms. Zhou. And firstly, I would like to thank the dignitaries and the special guests who made time to participate in the opening and, the pres and were present at this conference. It really reflects the importance and the status of such an event. And it was truly an honor to have them with us, even in a virtual way. Next, I would like to thank the speakers. I do not think we all appreciate and understand the amount of time and preparation it takes in putting together the presentations that we have seen the last two days. Not only the time in preparing the slides, but also the months and sometimes years of research and work that goes into the studies and the results in the information shared with us over the last two days. I would then also like to thank the session chairs who ran their respective session as a captain sailing her ship and managing the time so strictly and effectively. It is not an easy job, especially in the new virtual setting. During the first day, I really enjoyed the view into the future. It was stressed that we could build that we should build on the IMO implementation plan, but there were also a strong emphasis on global harmonization of standards by all participating organization, authorities, and manufacturers. It was again, I was again impressed by the scale and impact of the smart navigation project. The LTE maritime system really show some interesting results, and I understand that Korea now has full coverage of its coastline. The live, live demonstration of the smart navigation using the maritime connectivity platform was very convincing and promising for the future. Today, we clearly heard that there are many benefits linked to port optimization related to safety, efficiency, and sustainability. 
The interesting part seems to be that solutions are not technically complicated, but it's not so easy to get everybody on board. I think we can do better. It is very much about trust, openness, and a less political and more result-oriented approach. We heard much more about the Digital at Sea project from the Danish Maritime Authority, the Ministry of Ocean and Fishery, and Ayala. I really look forward to starting this ambitious plan and cover the broader digital agenda, and I'm proud that Ayala has again been chosen as the coordinator. We will, of course, involve many more actors, and I hope that they will all take part and join us at the first conference in Denmark next year. And, of course, our gracious host, the Ministry of Ocean and Fishery, especially Mr. Sun Bei Hong and his team, and, of course, our charming MC, Ms. Cho, and Eunice, who has tirelessly communicated with us during the last weeks. What an outstanding effort and execution. I would like to thank all in your team for the professional setup and service. I think again, Korea has set a new standard, this time for virtual conferences. And I really hope that you will share your experience and technology with us all. It has been a real pleasure and something we would all learn from. You have done an excellent job and I congratulate you with your fantastic result. I'm sure that the new Digital at Sea conferences will be as successful and add valuable input to the broader digital agenda. As I said earlier, I believe that the biggest challenge for us all is the international global harmonization of standards. Before the digital developments are standardized and global, it makes little sense in a maritime sector that is truly global and without borders, physical or digital. This harmonized and global approach is necessary for the successful implementation of the ambitious digital maritime agenda. The e-navigation underway conference and the digital at sea are a perfect step in that direction. At this conference, it has been pointed out that we need a digital ecosystem and that Ayala is a focal point in this regard and should spearhead a broad maritime digital agenda. I would agree with that and we will do our very best to develop the relevant global standards to support such an agenda. Lastly, I would like to thank all of you, the delegates. Without your participation and contribution, this would not have been a success. Thank you so much. The conference highlights were all good and can be used for further work within Ayala and elsewhere. <clears throat> Finally, I normally wish all of you a safe trip home, but unfortunately this year at this conference, I will only hope that you and your family will be safe and healthy during the last part of the pandemic pandemic. I really hope to see you soon in Ayala for committee meetings and at the Digital at Sea conference next year, because I believe that nothing can beat the physical meetings in the international arena. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful closing comment, Mr. Zakarie. Uh, I believe that he has truly summed up all of uh, our contents as well as the entire conference. Well, this brings our e-navigation underway 2020 Asia Pacific Conference to a close. However, we do hope that we will be able to see you in person next year. Thank you once again to all of the participants, delegates, distinguished guests, and audiences who participated in our conference. And please stay safe and healthy, and we'll hope to see you next year in person. Thank you very much.